One of the biggest reasons I like photo manipulation is that it enables us to tell stories through images. You can look at any image like today's visual and ask yourself so many questions like why this person is here? This place looks mysterious. What is he looking for in these jungles? I will leave all the answers for these questions for you to write in the comments. But in today's video, I will walk with you through the process behind creating this visual. So it's gonna be like a speed art with me commenting in the process itself. But if you want the full lens tutorial along with the PSD file and the stock images, don't worry, I've got you covered. You will find all these in the description. And for now, Let's start our journey. All right, guys, let's start with this background. I like to put images together at first and then blend them together with lighting and uh, editing the values and all this stuff. That gives me more control into the composition and the story behind the visual. So as you can see now, I'm trying to put all the images together without any blending, you know, I'm just cutting the images and put them into places and here I'm using channels to separate uh, complex shapes like the trees and all this stuff and I'm trying to blend it into the composition you know this scene is, go is going to be foggy and mysterious that's why I'm making this foggy effect at the back so I'm now trying here to put some green grass into the ground and then putting this large tree which is a main uh, focal element into our composition. It's a secondary focal element, you know, it's an element that helps us in understanding the whole story. It's like a support, it's not the main focal point, okay? So it's called like a secondary focal point. And here I'm trying to I cut the gra gra any plants or trees I'm cutting them with the color range or the channels these are the best ways to cut complex shapes like these and maybe also blend if uh, do is doing a great job so now let's care about the main focal element which is the car and the man here the car image needs a lot of retouching a lot of editing because the source image has a lot of sharp reflections you know and in images or in uh, co composites like this where the lights are very soft you have a lot of fog you know you have to uh, have like smooth reflections we shouldn't have these sharp reflections so I'm now darkening the glass of the car that will add mysteriousness into our composite and then putting it into the scene. I've noticed that the car itself, the image, is taken with a wide angle, which made me correct its perspective because there are a lot of distortions here, and we talk uh, in detail in this section into our full tutorial. Um, so now I'm here trying to make sure that the composition is right, and trying to blend all the images in a nice way without blending the colors and all this stuff. I'm just putting here the shadow for me, for my eye, to be guided because if I don't put any shadows, the image will look uh, like I cannot judge it, you know? I cannot judge the composition, I cannot judge if the car needs to be a little bit higher or not, you know? Uh, so I'm trying to put these shadows for the sake of adjusting the perspective and the composition. Trying to make smooth shadows because as I've already told you, we have a foggy scene with a lot of soft light and dark soft lights. Here the main image of this guy needs a lot of adjustment, the raw image. So I adjusted the lighting, the color cast and then cut it from the background with the pen tool because this is a main element or a main focal point into our design so we need to give it a lot of attention uh, in cutting so I'm now trying to mask his hair with a hair brush and took it into our scene 
Of course, choosing the right images is something crucial here because if you have like a car image that is taken into the noon time, you will need a lot of work to make it work into your foggy night scene, okay? Uh, so here I'm now masking the dog with the channels and I'm taking care of all the details in this area and refining the edge. Okay, let's put him here and very good. Now I'm trying to blend all the images together. So, so I started with correcting number one, the values, the lightness values. For this, I put 50, 100% gray layer at the top of everything and changing its blending mode into saturation. This will remove the colors and the saturation of the image uh, from our equation. So now we are caring about mainly the lightness values. The close elements should be dark and contrasty and the four elements should be like foggy and not contrasty. You cannot see their details in a clear or in a, in a nice way. So I'm now trying to adjust the, val the values according to this theory. This is, this is called atmospheric perspective, which is the perspective that is caused by the atmosphere effect, the dust in the air, and it should be like gradually increased. The farther you go in distance, the less contrast the elements should. That's, that's the main theory, and I'm applying this into every element into the composite, okay? So I'm here now trying to match the car darkness and this needs some eyeballing, you know, it needs uh, you to practice your eyes to see the differences in the values, you know, between 50% gray and 55% gray, you know, you, you have to see these differences and for this you need to have two things a good eye and a good monitor okay so now we adjusted the values and as you can see we have a lot of other things to be adjusted other than the values we need to adjust the saturation of the if each element and we need to adjust the colors quick pause if you are interested in creating amazing visuals like these step by step using photoshop you can check my full length classes in udemy and skillshare these are full length classes explaining everything along with the psd file and the stock images used so don't miss the chance and let's get back to the video so i started with the saturation i decreased the greens from each element especially the plants because it has a lot of green color which will not be realistic in an image like this and then i started to add the colors into the composite i usually put the main colors of the visual depending on the sky so i'm here now putting like a cyanish bluish sky color and try to not oversaturate colors because we tend to do this uh, at least at the beginning if you want to make like a very saturated uh, artistic visual okay keep it to the end because we want to leave a space for us to expand the saturation if we make like a very saturated visual from the beginning of building the visual like this we will not have like uh, a space to improve or to increase the saturation i hope you understand this point so what i'm doing now is just correcting the colors trying to match all the colors to the tune i want using color balance you can use also selective color or curves some people uh, use curves whatever feels good for you you can use it and um from time to time this is you know this is like an ongoing process you do not finish something and that's it you just keep getting back to the main subject and then edit it and uh, start to do any uh, something else and then try, uh, edit it and all this okay the next step i'm trying to do now is i'm trying to 
uh, draw the main light and the shadows. So I have drawn the light, the, the lights of the sky, and then I'm trying to draw the shadows depending on the angle of the main source of light, which is the sky. And the shadow here, we have two shadows. We have the contact shadow or the occlusion shadow and the uh, cast shadow. Here I'm trying to define in which planes should we put the light of the car. So this, this is crucial, guys. You need to understand the material upon which you are drawing the light. If you have like a very reflective material, like a metal for here, so you need to have like sharp reflections. Uh, that's why I'm trying to draw the edges with the pen tool. Okay. And here I used blend if to uh, delete some parts. Now I'm trying to use a texture brush to draw the light into the main guy. And if you don't know how to draw light and shadow, I have a, a full video for this. You can check it out into the description or the eye above. I have explained this in a detailed way. <laughs> okay. Very cool. Um, now I'm trying to put some shadows behind the man and between it and between the car. This will make this will give the illusion that the man is very close to the car. Okay. Now it's time to draw some lights of the um, the main car. And in this time, I I have just erased or masked some parts of the lights of the car and then drawn the, the reflected light into the grass and the plants. So here I have like painted the, gra the lights into the grass with a grass brush. Uh, because I want realistic results. I don't want like flat coloring or flat lighting. So I paint with the texture uh, of the main material. Okay. So here I'm trying to adjust the shape. Uh, and this, as I've already told you, this needs a good eye. And then I'm trying to put this overlay to create like the glow or the light effect of the core lights. Now I'm trying to adjust the lightness values. And here, uh, here is a main uh, point of our scene. So we need here to cast the lights into this big tree, which will uh, add some mysteriousness, you know. So I have drawn uh, the lights here manually. Uh, and as, a, as I've already told you, you can find a full video explaining how to draw highlights in details in the description, of course. This needs practice, guys. This is nothing else. It's just pure practice. You need to have some references and try to imitate them. And then by time, your skills will increase. That's it. It doesn't have any secret. Okay. So here I'm trying to draw the back lights of the car, which will add another color to our visual, you know, but it should be subtle because we don't want it to take our eyes or to take our attention from the main visual. Okay. And of course, some, some scene like this needs some fog overlays, which will spice everything up and add mysteriousness. <laughs> And here I'm trying to uh, put some overlays here and there. And here I'm trying to create like a bloom effect, which is basically something like a very bright spot. That's it. But it needs to be, to be also subtle. And now I'm trying to create some water bottles into these jungles, you know, which will add to the story. It's all about the story, guys. So um, besides knowing how to uh, blend images, how to match colors, draw light and shadow and all this stuff, you need to understand that 
these kind of visuals should have a story and that's the main thing the story will capture your eye and will arouse some questions into your mind and this will make you look at the image for like 10 seconds or maybe 15 seconds and this this is success guys you, you have done a great job if anybody looks at your visual for like 15 seconds that, that is very successful visual okay and here uh, finally I'm trying to tweak the colors adjust the lightness and all this stuff with the um, camera row filter trying to add some colors into the highlights and into the shadows you know and that's it guys here is our final visual and here is before and here is after all right guys that was it for today i hope you liked the video and if you want the full lens tutorial you will find it in the description along with the psd file and the stock images used and if you want to know how to draw light precisely and accurately you will find it in this video peace